Now this is my how I believe that the, the saucers, these flying saucers actually work. All right, you know how Frisbee works, the concept of angular momentum. Basically, the, the lift, it generates lift. The, high, the higher and lower uh, pressure differences generates lift. Okay, so now right here, if you have mercury inside this, now mercury might be heavy, but since it's heavy, you don't need much of it. So if you have an aluminum here, and you have an electromagnetic field generated with an electromagnetic... Uh, electric motor and a generator now this is i'll talk about that in a second how they work without entropy but you have that creating an electromagnetic field which is making this mercury spin in this aluminum shell now aluminum can, uh, cast aluminum is pretty strong and it's light and and it doesn't interact with electricity or electromagnetic fields too much now it does interact with magnets but very very low it's it's hard to see now you can actually hang something up that's a, like a can and get close to it with a magnet and wave it without touching it and it'll start to move so it does interact with it but not uh, in a, a real strong way so this would start spinning like a torque converter on a car on a transmission now the torque converter spins basically the body of this would start spinning and it would generate lift all right now right here you would have mercury that would act as a, a shield, like a, an inertia canceller. Now, you'd also have your electromagnetic energy in there, like a, a north and a north pushing against each other, creates like a, like a cushion or a shock. And the dense mercury would also create like a shock. So basically, when it takes off real fast, it won't break everyone's necks. You know what I mean? It'll kind of absorb the energy from the push, and it'll actually distribute it into it a lot easier, you know? So I think that's how these inertia cancellers work. But this is how it would look. Basically, from the top, the cab would stay stationary. All right. Now, if you have the cold fusion, like I was talking about on the other video, with the the thermoelectric or thermonuclear arc, and you have thermoelectric energy with uh, a, basically a lot of nuclear energy because you're using, I mean, cold fusion. You know. So, if you could create the little star in there, and you have your cold fusion creating the electrical energy to basically push this generator or electrical motor, you're going to create uh, uh, over unity energy. You basically, you're going to have a, a generator that can create a lot of energy, basically. So it's you know it's actually being ran by nuclear energy, but it can last forever. You know it can last a long time because we use radioisotope thermoelectric generators in space technology, and Voyager One and Voyager Two technically are mainly what we've used them in, and of course they're billions of miles away. So the only real effective energy on this planet that we can and should use is actually billions of miles away, and we don't use it. We cast that way out there. Nobody should even know about that. But some people know about it. But they don't think about how important it is. That kind of energy is what we need. These power plants waste so much energy. When you can use cold fusion and get... Basically, the you're using small amounts of radioactivity to create high heats. Basically, two to four times stronger than a nuclear reactor. When we use tons of it, you know, in nuclear reactors. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off the subject here. But basically, this is the concept of a, a UFO. You know, I think that's, it uses the concept of, angular, concept of angular momentum. All right. Just like a Vimana. I got another one around here about the Vimanas, but I'll explain that here in a little bit.